Sterling, the director of the National Museum of Women in the Arts, and it's obviously my great pleasure to bring you in from the 90 degree heat today. Thank you so much for coming uh, to our final uh, Fresh Talk program of this season, Accessory to Action, Adorning Wakanda. We're very pleased to have Dorian Fletcher with us today, Ayana Fluellen, and also Maya Nuku. And you'll hear more about them uh, from Milani Douglas, our Director of Public Programs, and you also can learn about them in the uh, brochure for today. Um, I am very pleased to announce that one of our sponsors is here with us tonight, and I'd like her to stand, Stephanie Sale. Uh, Stephanie's support that we have truly been able to make this program happen in just the way we wanted it to. And so uh, I really uh, want to say a, a sincere thanks to Stephanie for helping us with both the program here in the performance hall and then our um, stepping out performance of ritual and, and adornment uh, that we'll have in the Great Hall this evening as part of our Catalyst Cocktail Hour. Uh, the Women, Arts, and Social Change program is four years old. It has been made possible by leadership gifts and ongoing gifts from Denise Littlefield Sobel, the Dore Davis Family Fund, the Susan and Jim Swartz Public Programs Fund, with additional funding provided by the Bernstein Family Foundation, which is local, the Ravada Foundation of the Logan Family, again local, and the DC Commission on the Arts and Humanities, uh, which receives support from the National Endowment for the Arts. I know you all are uh, obviously looking at my beautiful necklace. <laughs> but I'm going to head off stage and uh, allow Milani Douglas to carry on with the program. Milani? Thank you all for giving me a reason to bring out all the fabulousness. I see you all did as well. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. All right. Um, Stephanie, it is a pleasure to have you join us. Because of you, we have been able to add a layer of fabulousness that has totally just taken the event to just, just a little, another level. So thank you for that. I highly appreciate that. Um, that is fitting to our guests. Yes. yes. Um, we have uh, added some an adornment performance. We have not been able to do that before. We're having an adornment walk. We were not able to do that before with a drummer. And so we appreciate um, that being able to add that layer. Thank you so much. And um, we are, one, how many people is this your first time here? How many people? Okay, the number's getting smaller. So that means that some people must be coming back. How many people have been here before? Aha, this number's getting bigger. Okay, good. How many people are members of the museum? Awesome. So this is the number that we need to get a little bit bigger. <laughs> right? I mean, you know. Because when you join the museum and you join, it allows us to give you more. So please, when you enjoy tonight, think about this. You know, just like if it's in the back of your head, like, what can I do? What can I do to make more of this happen? Membership. Oh, you know, it's really, um, it gives you access to a lot of other museums. So we'll make sure that we make that happen. Um, so. Before primed and stretched canvases, and before museum walls, before monuments of marble and bronze, there was the body. There was a woman's body, scientific name, AL288-1. Several hundred pieces of bone fossils representing 40% of the skeleton of a female of the hominin, a species, and I'm gonna say this wrong, Astrolopithecus afarensis, often referred to as Lucy, but her proper name is Dinkanesh, which means you are marvelous in the Amharic language. Amharic, the language of Ethiopia, original cradle of humanity, where the oldest bodies of that body were found, the oldest bones of that body were found. Now, can you imagine who she was and what she did? Just think of how she mirrored nature to learn how to be on this plane. Did her spirit marvel at the reds and blues from the sky? What did she do when those first berries or other foods stained her fingers? Did she like it? Was that the moment that was the mother of henna, rouge, and lipstick? What did she do with the feathers of a fallen bird? Did she mourn 
and honor its life by adorning her head and creating it her own plume? Does she need one to see her and inspire her to decorate this first canvas her body? Or did she do it for herself? Her world, an adornment playground with colors, leaves, feathers, shells, and more, more. Is this where the armor of the Dormelage was born? Could she ever imagine that her play world would play a starring role in the biggest film of one of our, of our times? That her exploration of the world would compel curators to create exhibitions on jewelry and adornment? That her bones would spark the imagination of women archaeologists working in the Caribbean, underwater, looking for traces of how her play became the discovery that became rituals and traditions? Is she dreaming of us now from the other side and watching the hands of Dorian Fletcher, of Maya Nuku, of Ayana Fluellen, and all of her daughters and sons? We may never know, but tonight, through a conversation between Dorian Fletcher, who is Marvel Comics' first licensed jewelry designer, who created the power pack accessories for the blockbuster film Black Panther, the Afrofuturist-inspired design propelled audiences into a world where power and gender roles were based on expertise and ability. Through Dr. Ayana Amagale Fuelen, UC's President's Postdoctoral Fellow at the University of California, Berkeley, and co-director of the Estate Little Princess Archaeology Project. And through Maya Nuku, the Evelyn A.J. Hall, and the John Freed Associate Curator of Oceanic Art, at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. We know the Met, Met game. we know them. <laughs> we will dig our traditions of adornment and access our power in honor of Dekanesh, of Ruth Carter, of Genua Moja, of Paloma Picasso, Thea Miller, Yoka Bidwaku, we say to you, Dekanesh, Dekanesh, Dekanesh. You are marvelous. You are marvelous. You are marvelous. Thank you.